Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be walking through all my thoughts, all my opinions on Sunlight's hands-on history kits. So last year when I was ordering my Sunlight materials, I kind of tossed this in last minute. I was like, well, that could be fun for my kids. I'm really not a crafty mom. And this could be kind of a fun way to make history come more alive for my kids was kind of my thoughts. So I just tossed it in. I tossed it in and honestly, we loved it. It was surprisingly one of the things my kids looked forward to the most when we were doing the Sunlight History Bible Literature program. So that is what we are gonna be talking about in today's video. So stay tuned if you want my thoughts on the hands-on history kits, as well as just kind of a sneak peek as to what's inside. And in my case, it's gonna be more like, what were the finished products? What did we like? What were my kids' favorites? Things like that. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel if you're new here or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. So like I said, we're gonna be talking all about Sunlight's hands-on history kit in today's video. So a little background on me, I have four kids, ages nine, seven and a half, and twin five-year-olds. So this kit I did with my older two kids over this past year, and it was really perfect for their age range. And we chose the World History One kit because Sunlight has three kits that go with their HBLA, B, and C programs. And we have been doing HBLB this year, the first part of World History. And so we chose this hands-on history kit for that. And so I will pop up a couple pictures here to show you all the different kits so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. And I believe they are somewhere around the $65 range in price although I do have a tip for that. So Sunlight often runs, I believe it's sometime in the fall, like an extras sale, like things you could add to your homeschool. And some of those things tend to be like extra language arts workbooks, as well as these hands-on kits. And so if you're organized enough, you can pick it up during the sale for the upcoming year. So I do recommend that if you know that you are going to be purchasing one of these kits for the future. So that's a little bit about the basics of the kit. And so my plan is to kind of take you loosely through the program to give you just an idea of what's included. I really do wish I would have filmed an unboxing of this program because there's so many things I would have told you during that, but I actually think review videos are a little bit more useful. And if I would have done that, you would have seen the fact that all of these different crafts come in their own bag, like they're separated out, which I'm not sure why that matters so much to me, but it was so easy. So say we were about to do the Trojan horse kit. I just go in there and I look for the one that has a little picture of the Trojan horse and I pull out that bag of craft supplies. And granted, there are a few things that are kind of at the bottom of the box that are used for a lot of different projects such as glue or the sticky dots, things like that. But for the most part, it's in the little sack. It's all ready to go. So you grab it and you get your book and you are ready to go. And so that's wonderful. And then another thing, like I just held up this, is I really like the instructor's guide, which I'll go through a little bit of a clip here showing a little bit more of the inside of it. It is colorful, it is easy to follow. It also has helpful information, like right here you can see it says difficulty and parent time required. Now, it really depends on your kids, obviously as to if they're able to do this more independently or not, which I will discuss a little bit of my thoughts at the end of the video when I go through how it worked for us. But I do like that that is included in the instructor's guide for the hands-on history. Now, what's important and what I think a lot of people get confused by, this instructor's guide does not tell you when to use it throughout your year. So say you have the HBLB, you have all 36 lessons and your IG from Sunlight, that is where you find where it is scheduled. Obviously, you can kind of tell when it's scheduled. If you're working on the Trojan horse, it's during the time you're talking about the Trojan Wars or Greece or different things like that. So you can kind of figure it out, but it is in the IG. It's in the main grid of the weekly schedule at the bottom and it says optional. And so it will have hands-on history kit and then it'll say like the laurel wreath or something like that. And so you know about the time when it aligns with what you're learning in history. Obviously you can do it yourself, but that is where you find when it's scheduled. This is not a scheduler. This is an instruction manual. So this gives you step-by-step step what to do. I do love that there's like pictures involved. It's not just text. 
And so it shows you specifically what to do. And I just, I'm a visual person in a lot of crafting sort of things because I just don't craft well. So having it include all of these colored pictures that tell you exactly what the kids are supposed to do is super helpful. So I found this to be very useful. So let me chat a bit through the projects. And so the table of contents in here is not necessarily in order of when you use it. So that's good to know. It definitely is not in order because the first thing was either the cylinder seal here or the archeology span kit. I'm not quite sure. They both happened kind of early on in the year. So let's just go kind of through the project. So like I said, I think the cylinder seal was first and this was cool because it was around the time when we were learning about early writing and how they would have to scratch it onto tablets. And in this case, it was using these scrolls to make multiple copies of something. What the kids loved about this, because this was one of their favorites, is they had to learn how to write everything backwards because they were making the clay cylinder with which to print different things on clay. And so it was really fun. Granted, it didn't work super well, like the print didn't actually transfer all that well. You could kind of see, I feel like my kids probably just needed to troubleshoot it a bit and maybe make the grooves a bit bigger so that when it was pressed onto the clay, it would have been visible, but they really enjoyed that. They spent so much time just kind of sketching out what their name would look like backwards and things like that. It was really fun. That one was definitely a hit. And then, like I said, the archeology span kit, that one was just fun. My daughter probably loved it more than my son because there was like little gems and things. And so it just kind of acted like a little sift, almost like you were panning for gold. That's what it reminded me of. They like archeology span stuff. So that one was good, really easy and very straightforward. And probably one of the few projects that the kids could do themselves. I'll explain that in just a bit. Oh, the next one. This is probably my kid's favorite because they still play it. So. I'll just show you. It's the Senate board game. I'll show it. It's a bad angle. So this is the game that you kind of see when you are reading. What book is it? It's the, it's the time traveler book. And it kind of mentions it like the Egyptian man and his wife are playing a game of Senate or something like that. And so you make the Senate game and you, you have the clay that you mold and harden in the oven. And then you have the sticks that you have to paint one side black, one side no paint, I guess. And it's just really fun. They really enjoy it. I will definitely overlay the video of them playing it because they just really enjoy it. I'd say this is one of their favorites from the kit. And I like this one because it was a one that was very easy for them to do together. That was one of the things that I feel like if I had to do it again, I might buy two kits because a lot of the projects they each wanted to do themselves, but the Senate board game worked really well for both of them. Okay, the next project was the Laurel Wreath project. This one was a bit of a fail because this was at the time in my homeschool and I was like, maybe I'll just give it to my daughter. Mind you, she's like seven and a half. I'm just gonna give it to her and see what happens. And she was all for that. Like, I don't mind letting my kids do things imperfectly, you know what I mean? To cut things a little bit wrong and things like that. But the problem with this was she was trying to cut the felt pieces to make the little leaves to stick on the headband. It's hard to cut felt. She had such a tough time. And so we never actually finished that because I never stepped in to help her because usually I'll step in to help them. But this was just during a season when I was like, I can't do it if you want to, but I cannot help you. And so it didn't really work. And the same for the next one, which was the Trojan horse. My son, I gave it to him to try himself and it was a fail as well. Really what this one came down to, and this is similar to the like, the chariot one, which I'll share with you in just a second, is it's a lot of wooden pieces that need to be glued together. And you just use basic like Elmer's glue, right? It comes in the kit, it's just basic glue. I think when I do this kit again with my younger kids, I might help on these two projects in specific that use a lot of pieces of wood and glue because you're trying to put together this horse with a neck and a head and the neck just keeps drooping because it's too heavy and the glue's not holding it and they're not waiting patiently for it to dry. And then I'm like, is this strong enough glue to begin with? So what I might do is use some stronger glue, like some Gorilla Glue at certain junctions of these projects to just help it be a little bit more stable because it just kind of melted, like if that makes sense, like it just fell apart. The glue wasn't strong enough and 
it might have worked if they were just a little more patient. But again, this was one that I just tried to give to my son to see if he could do it. And um, no, not really. I learned from this section that I, I need to be more involved. And that's something you need to know when you're thinking about this kid as well. It's not hands off, but it's not something that you have to do yourself either. I feel like they get a lot out of it. You just have to step in sometimes. So that was the Trojan horse and the laurel wreath. And then one of my daughter's favorites was the Chinese puppet. It's the dragon puppet. She loved this. She enjoyed all the paint and it was like the egg carton to make the head and the cloth and all this stuff. She enjoyed cutting out all the pieces. Like you had to have these templates from the back of the instructions. And then you had to like cut out pieces of red and yellow. I'll put up a picture of it finished. She did such a good job. She was so proud of it. She actually just gave it to her brother for a present because he didn't really want to do that one. He was a little jealous that she did it all herself, but I let her kind of run with that project. Again, I was helping a little bit more than I had on the previous two and it worked out really well. Oh, and then there's one that was like from Greece, I believe. So it was the face. And so my daughter did this little vase and I'll show you some of the instructions. I think I got some footage of how this looks inside the instructor's guide and I'll pop that up right here. This was another favorite. There was a part of the instructions that told the kids to like roll a roller inside to try and make it bigger. That didn't work as well. So I just told her to use her hands and shape it into a vase and she did just fine. So it's good to always try what they say to do, but then you might have to adjust like anything. So that was really fun. They really enjoyed decorating it afterwards. And then they just finished this one like the other day. So this is the yurt with a little door. It was a fun one. It was a little bit more structurally challenging because you had to put these little sticks, these popsicle sticks into the foam. And then you had to kind of get them to stay straight up, which was the challenge. And so I definitely had to help with that. And the fact that we did it in kind of two major stages actually helped that out because we made the framing and then there's a little ribbon that kind of ties it. We did that and then we got distracted and came back a week later to finish it out, but it was stronger then. So I'm actually pretty happy we did that because if we would have pushed through and tried to finish it that day, the glue probably wouldn't have been as set and it might not have finished out as well. So that one was a little bit more on the challenging side and same with the chariot, which I'll get some footage of us. We were just doing this yesterday. We haven't finished it up, but you can kind of see what my kids are doing here. It's again, similar to that Trojan horse. There's a lot of little pieces, but so far so good. I am trying to use that Gorilla Glue in this project to see if it helps, but my kids have really liked it. So I'll conclude this with just kind of some basic ideas. Like how did I like these kits? Was it worth the money? For me, 100% worth the money. Honestly, I think I'm gonna get two in the future now that they're a little older. So maybe for this upcoming year when we're doing the second year of world history, I will do two, one for each because they're old enough to want their own and I'll probably still have the twins share, but I'll have the big kids have their own. It's so worth it. I feel like my kids looked forward to the crafts and I love the fact that I did not have to organize it. I did not have to look on Pinterest. I did not have to collect materials. They sent it to me in a box. That matters to me. I know a lot of people will be fine getting their own supplies and I love that. I just am not that person. And so for me, these kinds of kits are gold. So I loved it. And then how about my kids? They really did too. Like I said, they really looked forward to these projects and they enjoyed putting them together. But then as we were doing it, we also got to remind ourselves of the history and talk about the Trojans because sometimes we did it a little late as per the schedule, but that was fine because we were able to talk and remind them about the history as they are crafting these projects. So for us, it was a really good fit and we are definitely looking forward to using future levels. So let me know down below if you are curious about this program or let me know if you've used it. What do you think? Did you enjoy the hands-on history kit? And if I didn't mention this already, I always have a link to the Sunlight website. It's actually a referral link. It saves you like $10 on your first order, which I know isn't much, but it's $10. And so it's worth just tacking on there if you are planning a Sunlight order. But I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to. And otherwise guys, I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.